Hi everybody, I'm Sergio and welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to show you a couple of maintenance tips to get the most out of your mobility scooter. So if you're looking to get your mobility scooter to last a long time, these are the tips you're going to want to follow along with. Now before we get started, I just want to mention two things. Number one, if you want a copy of our free product catalog, all you have to do is go to our website mobilitydirect.com, click on the green button at the top of every page that says free catalog, fill out that simple short form and one will be in your mailbox within one to two weeks tops. I also want to say that if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're automatically going to get entered into our monthly giveaway. We're giving away free mobility scooters, accessories, all kinds of goodies once per month. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to automatically get entered into the giveaway. Now, I'm gonna show you the last winner on the screen so you know it's legit, and we'll be right back with you. All right, we're here. We're pulling up to the uh, Lucky Winners apartment building, and we're gonna bring the scooter up to her door, and we're gonna get the reaction on video. I'm pretty excited, this is awesome. I mean, we're giving away a mobility scooter to someone that truly needs it. Oh, I like that. Oh, thank you. You like the scooter? All right for me. We're giving this I was going to say, you look like you can run a marathon. You don't need a scooter. No. We're actually giving this one uh, to one of the residents here on the third floor. It might be your Did neighbor. You yeah, yeah, they entered into a giveaway raffle and they won. That's oh, why we're getting it on camera. So oh yep. my gosh. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's good Hello. to meet you. Yeah. This is for you. Hi, Justin. Oh, God bless you. You won. All right, so we're here with Gloria. And she's got her scooter that we're donating, and all she did was subscribe to our YouTube channel about a year ago. Really? I said it's a godsend that I got this. It's a miracle, really. I needed it desperately. Well, it's, it's something we're really happy to be able to do, Gloria. Thank and, you. And we really appreciate those kind words. And, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is subscribe. This is what we're doing here every six months. So if you know somebody else that could use one, please tell them about it. All right, welcome back. So hopefully you've subscribed and you could be the next lucky winner. Good luck to you if you did. And one other thing that I want to mention is that we have chapters in this video so you can skip forward to the sections you really want to learn about if you don't feel like watching the entire video. I also want to take the time to let you know that we are doing a monthly Q&A session. So, we're gonna be doing live streams the first Wednesday of every month. If you have questions that you wanna ask me or a technician about your mobility product, like how to troubleshoot an issue you're having, join us live on YouTube the first Wednesday of every month and you'll be able to ask those questions and get answers in real time. So again, if you subscribe, you'll get notified when those videos are about to take place, which is another great reason to consider subscribing. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our maintenance tips video. Tip number one, probably the most beneficial tip to follow along with, and that is to keep your scooter clean, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have a can of air spray that's compressed, you can go ahead and use this to get into your charging ports, get into where the bearings are on your wheels, Get into any part that opens and closes with electrical connections. If you have a go-go scooter like this, you know that the battery box comes right out and underneath you're gonna have connectors and these are used to send power from the battery box to the scooters, electrical components, the controller, the wire harness, and you wanna keep those connections nice and clean. The last thing you want is to have dirt, grime, debris, grease, nasty stuff building up in your bearings, in your electrical connections, your charging port. So make sure that you take the time to clean your scooter. It helps to have a microfiber cloth so you're not leaving behind little fibers that paper towels or other paper-based cleaning materials leave behind. So get a microfiber cloth, clean your scooter as often as you can. Keep it clean, be proud of your mobility scooter. And that in and of itself will allow your mobility scooter to go the distance and last much longer. Now, tip number two, which is by far going to be the next most effective tip. Um, these aren't ranked in any particular order, by the way, but keeping your battery charged and maintaining your battery the way it's supposed to is gonna allow you to get the most out of your batteries, which 
batteries are expensive and you need to do that so that you're not buying new batteries frequently. And the way to do that is to make sure that the battery meter on your scooter doesn't drain down to the red if you can avoid it. So whatever your meter looks like, just make sure that it doesn't drain all the way. Kind of like an automobile, you don't want to run out of gas. You want to fill up at about halfway if you can. If it gets down to the red, you're abusing your batteries. You usually want to start charging when there's only one or two greens left or if you're in the yellow. If you're going down to the red, you're abusing your batteries and they're not going to last as long as they potentially could. Here in South Florida, because of the extreme heat during the summers, batteries are usually going to last about two to three years if you have standard sealed lead acid batteries. If you have lithium batteries, which <laughs> we're known for, they're going to last a lot longer. Well, we're, only, we're one of the only dealers out there allowed to offer lithium upgrades on certain mobility scooters like the Aficam series where you can get up to 100 miles per charge. Check out our videos. We have an entire playlist dedicated to Aficam scooters and lithium conversions if you want to convert your scooter to lithium. Most of the time it's really easy and very possible to do so. They last longer, they weigh about half as much as a traditional battery, and the warranty is 11 years compared to a year, which is like the longest warranty you get on a standard sealed lead acid battery. So I highly recommend checking them out, but more importantly, take care of your batteries, folks. I'm going to put a link to the video that we have on our YouTube that talks all about battery maintenance and how to get the most out of your batteries. Put the link in the description below as well. Make sure you watch that. But the biggest tip is don't let that battery meter go all the way to empty or even close to it. Like I said, try to start charging about halfway. That's about where you want to start charging. Not any later if you can avoid it. Now, my next tip for maintenance on your mobility scooter. Everybody knows what this is, WD-40. Few people know that it stands for Water Deterrent 40. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna keep rust and oxidation from happening. So what you wanna do is not necessarily, not necessarily spray your entire scooter down with it, but what I recommend doing is getting your microfiber cloth spraying it down, getting it a little saturated, and then wiping down any pieces that are exposed and metal, like your tiller frame here, the fork for the front wheel, in the back on your seat you have your accessory port for your one inch square accessories that fit right in there. So soak up that rag with some WD-40. You can use T9 by Boeing or any kind of anti-corrosion water deterrent and really just kind of find the areas of the exposed metal that you think might be prone to rust. You can even lift up the yellow lever for the brake switch, swipe that down. Here in South Florida, we have a lot of individuals that like to go fishing and they're out by the salt water and that salt in the air alone can cause corrosion. It doesn't necessarily need to get wet. However, if you wet your scooter, chances are it's gonna start rusting sooner than later. So my recommendation is be proactive. Wipe down the metal parts of your scooter with some water deterrent spray, and you're gonna notice that your scooter's not gonna rust out. I can't tell you how many customers come to our stores with a scooter or a power wheelchair that's almost completely rusted out. And you may not see the rust because it's hidden inside of the dash here, but when you open this dash, you might notice that all your components in there are rusted out. And that could be because you're either going in the rain when you shouldn't be, no mobility scooter is rainproof, some are more rain resistant than others, each scooter comes with an IPX rating, which is gonna tell you how rainproof or water resistant it is. Now this scooter right here, I would not recommend taking out in the rain whatsoever. Once water gets into the dash, the components in there are gonna start rusting out. This scooter over here can handle rain, in my opinion, a lot better than something like this, but still, you don't wanna be out there when it's soaking wet, downpouring rain, because once water gets into the ignition where your key goes into, or into the crevices of where the buttons are on the dash, it's just a matter of time. Things are gonna start rusting out and you're gonna have problems down the road. It may not happen right away, but once rust starts building, it doesn't really stop. So that's my next biggest tip. Prepare for oxidation, rust, and corrosion. Now, 
We have a video that shows you actually how to take apart a scooter and spray it with something that's known as conformal coating, which I'm going to throw on the screen as I discuss it a little bit and what it is and how it works. Conformal coating is a silicone based spray that if you really know what you're doing, you can take apart your dash and spray all of the components that have any kind of electrical connections on it and it's going to essentially allow those components to become somewhat waterproof, not completely, but it's going to coat it with silicone so you don't want to spray a male and female connector with the silicone and then connect it otherwise it won't make contact with that coating on there. But while it's already connected you can definitely spray it down with some conformal coating and it's going to give it a layer of protection against rain, oxidation, and high levels of humidity so that hopefully it doesn't oxidate or rust as bad without it. Now I don't recommend doing that if you're not mechanically inclined. This is really a tip for technicians or if you're getting a scooter worked on locally through us, you can inquire at your local store Mobility Direct location to see if they can do that for you. It is available, but limited to certain locations only. That's going to be my next biggest tip to prevent against corrosion and rust and oxidation. So my next tip is going to be to use something that is called dielectric grease. Now there are many different brands and makes that uh, produce this type of product, but it's called dielectric grease. And this is made by Permatex. It's a little tiny bottle, little tube bottle here that you can use. And basically what this is, is it's a conductive lubricant that's also going to protect against rust, corrosion, but it's specifically made for conductive purposes. So battery connections, um, any kind of wiring harnesses and clips that connect together that send electricity or signals of any type of voltage from one wire to another with a connection, coat it in dielectric grease. So to give you an example of where I would use this, going back to the bottom of the battery case here, you can see that there are some pins that are basically used to send voltage from the battery box to the scooter down here. So you can see these pins fall into those holes right there. So what I would do is put a little bit of dielectric grease on those pins, a little bit on those holes, and that's going to keep it from rusting out. But at the same time, like we were talking about before, with the conformal coating, that's a silicone based spray. It would actually hinder the connection because of that silicone coating being there between the pins and the holes. With this dielectric grease, it's okay to use in the connections because it's conductive. So electricity will pass through from the pins to the holes here with this type of grease and it's going to allow the electricity to pass through perfectly. So it's going to protect it and it's going to keep the conductivity there, which is what you need. Now, if you follow along with all these tips, you really shouldn't have too many problems with rusting or oxidation at all. Your product's going to last you a really long time, especially if you take care of the batteries. Uh, something else, going back to my tip before with cleaning, get a toothbrush or a little hand brush like this every once in a while. Take your wheels off and you're going to see the bearing in the middle of the wheel assembly. You're going to want to brush that bearing down because in doing so, you're going to see that you probably have a little bit of debris in there. It could be sand, could be dirt. And if you hear your wheel squeaking as you're riding, that's probably why. So if you hear any kind of squeaking or if you just want to make sure that your bearings are turning over smoothly and that they're well lubricated, start by cleaning them first and then you can either use some bearing lubricant or WD-40 works good too. Bearings need maintenance every once in a while so you want to try and do that every once in a while too. Alright, so we're going to give you another tip now which only applies to mobility scooters like the Go-Go's that come apart very easily and this is a Pride Mobility Go-Go scooter which comes apart. So I took the seat off, there were no levers, no screws required, just comes right off just like the battery case which you can just pick straight up. Now what these scooters are known for, and it's not just the Pride Go-Go's, there are a lot of different models that come apart like this. And this one so happens to come apart with something known as feather touch disassembly. It's really easy to work with. It's awesome. As you can see, the front half detaches from the rear half. Now what I want to point out here is that there is a connector block here. 
This is the female connector block and it has pins just like the battery box that we were showing you before. So this is the female connector block for the power and all the different signals to be passed from the front where the battery is to the rear where the braking system is and the motor. Now this is the female connector, right here is the male connector and as you can see it has terminal connectors that are basically holes and this is the male block which has holes built into it that the female connector block plugs into. So you can see how these two units would meet and create a connection. We're going to back up with the camera now so you can see that full picture a little bit better. So this male connector block with the holes for the pins on the female connector block, they make contact when you're taking it apart and putting it back together. So what you want to make sure is that number one, they're covered with dielectric grease like we were just talking about. So you can coat that with dielectric grease. But number two, if it doesn't feel like it's going in, you don't want to use force and jam it in. If it's not going in, check our YouTube channel. We have a video for this, but these little screws right here, these um, machine screws with the Allen key holes, there's four of them. One, two, three, four. You can adjust those screws to change the position of this block. So when you need to, if you feel like this block isn't making a connection, if it's just not connecting as easily like the way it used to when you first got your scooter, you can adjust those screws and make sure you reposition the block either tilt it back a little bit, tilt it forward a little bit until it starts connecting the way it should. The last thing you want to do is force it because those pins over time they're pretty fragile and they can break. Once you break one of those pins, depending on the model that you have, it could require a complete motor replacement because some of these manufacturers do not offer just the pins to replace the pins, depending on the model. And with the back orders on everything, uh, ever since the supply chain issues we've been facing, it can be hard to get those parts even if they are available. So when it comes to your disassembling scooters, Make sure that it's connecting nice and smoothly without too much force required. Now, short of that, there are a lot of other things that you can do, and I would really love it if you join us for our Q&A session on the first Wednesday of every month so you can ask more about those maintenance tips. I don't want to keep this video going for too long, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you found these tips helpful. And if you need to ask any other questions, if you can't make it to the live Q&A on the first Wednesday of every month, we actually have a forum on our website. So you can go to our website, click on the link at the top of every page that says forum, create an account, post a question. If you have a question, go to our forum, ask your question, and we will answer it in a timely manner. Whether it's something technical or something about our products and sales, our forum is a great place to go in create a user account and start engaging with not only our technicians, but other mobility scooter owners and mobility product owners as well. Again, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Before you go, please don't forget to visit our website, mobilitydirect.com and click on the green button that says free catalog to claim your very own free catalog. Just fill out the short form and it should get to you in about a week or two max. I just want to take this time to personally thank each and every one of you for watching this video. We couldn't do it without our subscribers. So if you like our content, please go to YouTube, search for Mobility Direct, and subscribe to our channel. You can enable notifications. That way you'll get notified whenever we release new videos. We're constantly making great videos. We have tons of playlists that range from repair videos, unboxing videos, research and development, and much, much more. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and ask any questions in the comments section below. We love hearing from our audience, whether it's feedback, comments, or suggestions for a new video topic. We love hearing from you. None of this could be done without our loyal audience. We hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching again. Have a great day.